fluorescent light here that they don't generate much heat, but we had the, the incandescent light bulbs, you know, uh, that would get kind of hot. But back then, they didn't have you know, the LED lights that, that would give us the illumination that we need. They didn't have the tap lights that you could just tap. You had to have oh, either a candle or a lantern or a torch. And so I was kind of thinking about that thing now. You know, whenever you lit the candle or the torch or, or whatever it was, that flame would also produce light, right. but it would also produce heat. Mm -hmm. So therefore, you think about it. Now, if your neighbor who's not saved is dry and very dry and uh. does not know the Lord, mm -hmm. they need to get to a, get next to a source that can ignite them. Yes, Amen. See, yes, some of the lights that we're thinking about now, you know, they don't have that quality, they don't have that property. But what God is saying is when I save you, I'm saving you to be like that torch. Mm -hmm. I'm saving you to be like That's that right. match mm -hmm. that you can light up anywhere and, and touch somebody who was dry. Yeah. You know, just touch your name and say, oh, you lit. <laughs> yes. Oh Lord, come on, see some y'all, y'all, y'all. Uh, Put it to somebody else and say, you lit. So you gotta realize, you gotta stir something up. They, they didn't get that. Let's say this another way. Tell them, say you blessed. You blessed. Tell somebody else, say you coming out of your situation. You coming out of your situation. Say your trial ends today. Your trial ends today. Your situation is canceled in Jesus' name. Yes. See, you didn't realize this is how you ignite your brother and your sister that might otherwise be dry. That might otherwise be getting bullied. You don't even realize they're getting bullied. They're getting they depressed. They feel like giving up. They feel like there's nobody for me. But you going to be a mouthpiece and the least the fire of God. Amen. Not to kill, but to heal. Amen. The fire of God to heal. Amen. Every broken place. You know, fire contagious. <laughs> I can't think of another way to describe it. Come you on. can't just set a fire in your neighbor's yard and don't watch it. If you do, your own yard will burn up. Amen. 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 A fire is catch. It's contagious. If you're really on fire for God, there's no way that you can be saved and working for 20 years and nobody at your job know you saved. Jesus. The fire of God is contagious. It's now, contagious. that don't mean you walk around work speaking in tongues and laying folks on hands on folks and act spooky. That's not what I'm talking about. But your life and your integrity and how you handle situations and confrontations and conflicts and obstacles will be an example. Amen. Of Christ. Amen. The fire of God that's alive yes. in your heart. Fire is alive. Fire is alive. Amen. Turn into your turn one last scripture. First Kings 18. Thank you, Jesus. First Kings 18. And I love to read um, the word of God. And, and I just got tickled when I was reading this as we were studying. This is about um, Elijah and when he took on um, the 450 prophets of Baal. Amen. And Elijah, the Lord told Elijah to go to Ahab. Now Ahab, Ahab was the king and he had been looking for Elijah. But um, Ahab's servant was Obadiah, and Obadiah knew the Lord. Obadiah was a man of God from a young age. Um, and so Ahab and Obadiah had split up. They were going separate ways. And Elijah bumped into Obadiah. He said, now I want you to go and tell um, your master, go and tell Ahab to come and meet me. Obadiah said, what have I done? What sin have I done that's so great that you're going to get me killed? Elijah said, what? What are you talking about? He said, uh-uh. We would go, we would hear that you were in a place, and we would get there. By the time we get there, you be gone. You're going to send me to go tell Ahab to come and meet you, and the Lord going to take you somewhere else, and he going to come here. You ain't going to be here, and I will surely die this day. And then he began to rehearse. I used to, he said, I hid the prophets and, and um, the, the prophets of God, and I fed them, and I took them water. What have I done that God going to kill me? <laughs> so Elijah said, no, I'm going to show myself to him today. God has sent me here today. And this is what we're about to um, look at. Yes. So Elijah and Ahab meet. And Elijah gives him the word. He said, now you go get the 450 prophets of Baal and go get the uh, 400 and other, other 400 prophets of Asherah and, uh, that eat at Jezebel's table. And we're going to meet. Amen? Amen. I want you to go down to verse 23. So Ahab sent for all the children, and everybody gathered up on Mount Carmel. And I'm going to let Pastor Troy lead you from here. Glory, hallelujah. Now, now, how long will you falter between two opinions? That's verse 21. How long will you falter between? I want to stop right there. So, it tells us that a person who is unstable in right. their mind right. 
receives nothing, nothing. from the Lord. Amen. Either God is for you or he's against you. How long will you be wondering, is God for me or is God against me? How long will you be wondering, whose side am I on? Am I on the Lord's side? Uh -huh. oh, you got to begin to know in your Noah that I'm in the right place at the right time, on. Yes. on the right side, yes. so I can get the right result. Amen. There's a war going on, and if you don't choose sides, you already chosen. And Elijah came to all of the people, and he said, how long will you be of, of a split mind? How long would you be of a split mind? How long would you be wishy-washy? If the, if the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, follow him. But the people answered him, not a word. They were quiet. Then Elijah said to the people, I am, I alone am left a prophet of the Lord. But Baal has 450 men. Therefore, let them give two bulls and let them choose one for themselves. Cut it into pieces, lay it on wood, put no fire under it, and I will prepare for the other bull the same way. Verse 24 then you call on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of my God, and we will see the Lord that answers by fire. He is God. See, we halted between two opinions already. We see here the man of God has faith. See, it's all about faith. No matter where you at, you got to believe. You're going to have to believe that God is God in your situation. So even if you're outnumbered 450 to 1, it's just you, but it's 450 50 people against you. Maybe it's more than that, but you still got to take a stand in Jesus' name. Yes. Yes. And then you're the man of God. Fire will cause you to be bold. Mm. It will cause you to rise. That fire on the inside of you will cause a boldness to rise up because that fire, you know, that's, that's God. And you know that's the presence of God is in the fire. Hey, you know what? Y'all prepare an offering. And I'll prepare an offering. And whoever answers, whoever God answers by fire, even though you outnumbered. That's right. Even though they already counted you out, you the underdog. Mm -hmm. You know, even though you've been beaten for a long time and bruised for a long time, we watched this movie called The Punch Lady. See, she saw her mama being abused, but at, at first you didn't know that it was her mom. But she fell into that cycle of abuse as well. Right. Punch Lady, that's the reason why it was called a Punch Lady. Right. Her husband was this great um, he was this great martial arts fighter. So whenever they got into a fault, she knew I can't defend myself. You know, he knows all, but she knew all of the moves personally. She knew whenever he would put it in the rear naked choke. She knew whenever he, he would hit her with a straight right. foot. So she had been beaten and bruised in his marriage for a long time. And there came a time where when the daughter came in and the daughter stood up and was like, no. And then the husband was just about to hit the daughter when she knocked him out with a frying pan and they left. You said, where are you going? I'm here today to tell you that, see, you've been shy and you've been timid too long. She decided that she was going to she was going to fight back. So she went down to where he was and in a fit of anger and madness, she said, I'll fight you in three months in the ring. And he said, guess what? I'll tie one of my hands behind the back. They said, that's fine. So now she had to open up her mouth prematurely and got herself in the situation. She needed to find somebody that would train her. She found this man who did not know anything, but she offered him a substantial sum of money. So what he did was he found somebody to train him. And as he was learning, he was training her. Right. I know that's a problem, right? But sometimes, in order for you to encourage them, but Pastor, I've only been saved, you know, three months. And, and they hadn't been saved. So guess what? You know a little bit more than they do. If you get some teaching, just tell them what you know. Be the light and shine just as bright as you can. And I guarantee you, you can pull some people in. But this guy was very smart. See, and what he saw was he said, look, I watched you, I watched your opponent fight, and I saw all of the mathematical you know, angles and errors that he punched and how he powers. You need to move like this. You need to do this. And he began to train that woman and train her and train her. And then even it got to a place where when he was taken out because the guy, the husband saw him and took him out, hit him with a truck, broke his leg. He said, I can't train him. She said, that's all right. I'll train myself. There's going to come a time when the people that you was calling, the come people on, you were man. talking on, the people that you were praying with can't pray with you no more. That's and right. you're going to need to say, you know what, Lord? I'm going to pray. I'm going to keep praying. I'm going to say yes. what I know. So they came to this place where they, when they got in the ring, uh, she had been taunted by him, you know, countless number of times up until the time when they get into the ring. Now you're in the battle, you know, and you need to know that God is with you. And, and in this, in, in on that show, they, the, the guy kept telling her, her trainer kept telling her, keep your eyes open. 
See, my people perish before lack of vision. And, and so a whole while she kept running and running around the ring, you know, when she made it through the first round, when he was supposed to just play with her. But in the second round, when they got started, and she had her eyes open, and she saw the punch coming, she leaned. And the punch went. And her whole countenance changed. In one second. <laughs> From the fact when she realized when I keep my eyes open, I can see it coming. That's right. She raised up. You can see the fire in her eyes. Yes. And the enemy could too. That's right. That's right. That's right. I said that to say this. When you know who you are. That's right. And you know that the fire of God operates on the inside of you. Before you even make it to the door, the devil knows something ain't right. I mean, something is right. Uh, I'm in trouble, and you come around the corner in slow motion. And the devil will be like, Oh Lord, it's fine. The fire of God is in this place. Amen. And, and he knew at that moment that she was no longer afraid of him. And he, though he was better trained than she was, this is the enemy, he was more skilled than she was. He was stronger than she was. And in every physical sense, he should have been able to beat her. But because she had been afraid of him for so long, like we've been with the enemy and running, she ran around and around that ring for a few rounds. She would just Jesus. run from him. And he was, I mean, she just was shaking. But when she began to stand on her own, and she began to duck, and she began to see, it became strategic. It became very strategic. It wasn't that, this is what I want you to see, it wasn't that she was more physically strong than he was, but she was strengthened within herself. Amen. Remember in Acts, they were uh, filled with the power of the Holy yes. Spirit. Yes. Once you realize, see the fight was already in her, but she was so busy running. Come Once on. you realize that God has already put on the inside of you everything you need to stand up against the enemy, yes. that I ain't got to take this, you ain't going to be doing me all kind of ways, my, you ain't going to drag my children out of the covering of God for 10 and 15 years, and then they come back to God, both busted in the stuff. That don't have to be the testimony of the children when my man and daddy know how to stand and fight. Hallelujah. When you know what's on the inside of you, that's what happens. She woke up in that round. When she said, and she told him, she said, you know what, I'm used to your licks. Mm. You've been beating on me for years. My whole life I've been taking this. Your licks don't hurt me no more. And many of us have been just drugged by the devil for years. Jeez. We've allowed him to control our house. We've allowed him to control our future. We've allowed him to control our family. We've allowed him to control our mouth. We've allowed him to control our mind. So when you give your life to God and when you understand that the power of God is on the inside of you, guess what? He ain't got no new tricks. The Amen. same punches you've been taking them for years, just roll with it, baby, and give it back the word of God. Amen. 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 We got to fight with the word of God. Hallelujah. There's that inner strength on the inside of you. Yes. It's in you. It's in you. And this is what Elijah did. He went to the inner. Do you trust God enough to take a stand like Elijah did? He said, this is what it's going to be, and I'm going to even let y'all go first. All right. He said, I'm going to let y'all call that call from morning through noon into the night. And Elijah began to pick at him. Is your guy asleep? He taking a breath. He on vacation. What's going on? Somebody need to go wake him up. What's going on with your God over here? That's how we got to be. We gotta be. Are you willing to take a stand on your job if they ask you to compromise? Even if you say no to the compromise could possibly cost your job, you, your job would you trust God? Or would you compromise? That's what. That's how. That's the kind of faith we're talking about. Amen. The kind of faith where I'm not gonna do anything to get me outside of the will of God, if, even if it means I gotta stand by myself. That's the kind of faith and the kind of relationship that you have. That's what the fire comes to do to strengthen you so that you can stand, even if you have to stand by yourself. Amen. Amen. I love God. He does supernatural things. Now the battle rages on. And for, could you imagine 
450 false prophets uh-huh. all over here from noon now, one hour and past, two hours and past, you know, three hours and past. Now, some of them horse probably sounded like me, and some of them probably tired and sitting there, and Elijah been torn them to and fro. Now, then they got to the place where they're desperate. So, as was their ritual, they went and got knives, okay, and they started cutting right. themselves. Hey, calling on whatever they, Bell, where you at? Bell, where you at? They cut themselves. I don't know about you, but God's not going to call us to pick up a knife and cut ourselves. Amen. We don't have to make the cut on our physical body, but we got to cut some people off. We got to cut some things out of our lives in order to see the fire of God move. Here it is now, the challenge is on, you know, and 450 people, all of them raising up their voices, raising up their voices, and ain't nothing happening. Then the man of God, now, his altar was just like theirs, but there was a little bit more. It, it was built up, but he told them, say, y'all pour water over everything. Right. So there was wood, the wood was on the bricks, the bricks was around, there was a trench dug, and water was poured everything. Not one time, not two times, but it was drenched in water. Huh? How many? Four times. How many times? Four. It was drenched four times, Lord have mercy. But let me tell you, the, the fire of God, when God fights for you, is so supernatural, it will burn up the unburnable. Amen. The fire Amen. came down, and it said it consumed oh, the yes. dust. Yes. It consumed the rocks. Yes. It consumed yes. the yes. wood. Yes. It consumed the offering. Uh-huh. And on the way up, <laughs> lift up the water. Lord, have mercy. Glory, hallelujah. Don't you know when God do a thing, there ain't going to be no doubt about it. You're not going to let us like, well, maybe it was just wow. because. I was um, in the right place at the right. Maybe it was just because of uh, my good looks. They blessed me. Maybe it was just because uh, my mama and my daddy did their best. But no, baby. God said when I do this thing, there ain't going to be no doubt about it. Then you're going to say, look, you you was in the wrong place at the right time to receive the blessing that you got because you were lost. You didn't even know what was going on. You didn't even sign a form. You didn't, they just walked up and said, look, we choose you to do this and, and you're going to be blessed. See, look, it's just like this. If you don't understand the whole thing, that lady who who did Sweet Brown, the one who did that, oh Lord, it's a fire. They interviewed her. They probably looked for somebody who was there. And you know what? We all probably laughed at her. But this this woman is making money now. A uh, dentist. She got her teeth fixed through her own commercial. Hello. Uh, uh, so she got endorsement deals that she's doing. And people use her image and likeness without her permission. Right. And she's got a lawsuit now that might net her millions. All because she was at the right place at the wrong time. In a house fire. God take your misfortune and, and bring you fortune out of your misfortune. Only the fire of God can do that. Only. And when Elijah was talking to the Lord, he just said, God, do this so that the people will know that you are God. Because, see, the people had turned from God. And when they saw the miracle of God, they all fell on their faces and began to proclaim that he is God. So as you receive the power of God and the fire of God, and you turn from your own issues and your own agenda, amen, and you've received your salvation and you know that God can fight for you, now we reproduce. Now we can lead others to Christ. That's what it's about. That's how we're going to advance the kingdom of God, by sharing our testimonies. It says we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Amen. When you share with somebody how God's fire has changed your life, when you share with somebody how God's fire has healed you, when it has increased your faith, the fire of God, so that the people may know that you are God. Yeah. It wasn't so that Elijah can prove that he was a better prophet than the false prophet. Amen. It wasn't so that Ahab would quit chasing him. It was only so God could get the glory. Right. Amen. It Amen. was only so God could get the glory. Come on and put your hands together. Yeah. For the Lord. Hallelujah.